everyone, my name is Desmond. I am part of Rapid's APEC sales engineering team. So today I'd like to talk to you about fraud and specifically on what we have observed over the last two years and on some key strategies that you can actually look at to manage your fraud in, in your payment process. So first up, what is fraud? Fraud is wrongful or criminal deception intended for personal or financial gain. The very first recorded incident of financial fraud dates all the way back to 300 BC, where a Greek ship owner attempted to defraud an insurance scheme. He didn't succeed at the end, but ever since then, there were many known occurrences of financial fraud. In fact, the truth of the matter is, as long as money and credit exist, you will have individuals or groups with bad intentions attempting to game the system for their benefit. So with the pandemic, it has accelerated the growth of digital payments. And digital payments has now been forecasted to grow and exceed 4 billion users by the year 2025. This has created a huge opportunity for the criminals or I'll say fraudsters to conduct their activities. And they have been keeping pace with the industry and how it changes. For example, they have moved on to not just conducting credit card fraud to fraud in alternative payment methods. That is why as merchants, you will need to be savvy in these matters in order to protect your business against them. If not, there will be consequences that you may actually face. Payment fraud comes with a hefty price tag. And many times, it is the merchant who will actually have to pay for this cost. For example, when a fraudster steals credit card information and makes a purchase online, for the original customer, the credit card owner, he or she can simply just reach out to their issuing bank to make a request for a chargeback to get their money back. But for the merchant, it is not the case. The merchant can not only lose the customer, but they could also lose the goods that are involved in the transaction because the goods may have been shipped to the fraudster already. And on top of that, they may lose money and a lot of time. In addition, the chargeback ratio that they maintain will also go up and that may lead to them facing hefty penalties given down by the card schemes. Based on multiple surveys done by different organizations, it was reported that there is a growing trend where more fraud cases were reported over the last year. An estimate shows that the overall value of e-commerce Fraud is targeted to rise by 18% just in 2021. And more than 50% of the merchants surveyed show that there is higher chargeback levels that are being reported. And another statistic shows that more than 80% of the merchants surveyed have reported that they have lost revenue to fraud. And at Rapid, we estimate that that amount could be up to about 5% for some merchants. And beyond this, there are also other indirect costs involved. Losing productivity as staff are deployed to handle the additional work. Negative publicity, reputational damage, and customer churn are some of the top concerns expressed by merchants worldwide. So in 2020, these are some of the key categories of fraud which were reported. And again, the stats show that these cases are reported to be on a rise. So as a merchant, what can you do about it? What are the strategies that you can take? Today, I can share with you six that I've listed out over here. Number one, leveraging on modern fraud tools with machine learning capabilities. Traditionally, merchants relied on static rules alone to detect fraudulent transactions. While these are still important in the overall management of fraud, but using them alone may not be sufficient. Static rules tend to generate false positives, hence blocking off 
a lot of good transactions. It really depends on how strict you set those rules are. If it's too strict, many of the legitimate transactions may actually get blocked along the way. And static rules may be hard to maintain and to scale. And they are unable to react or change in a way to, to cater to what the market is actually needing. So they can grow to be outdated very quickly without if you are not actually maintaining them. Machine learning, on the other hand, leverages on data to look out for anomalies in a transaction. And this is proving to be more accurate, more scalable, and much more effective. Number two, active testing and updating of static rules. Of course, where static rules apply, there should be a constant review process to ensure that they are effective. It is also recommended that you utilize a front tool that allows you to simulate the rules that you have configured. This is to ensure that whatever has been configured will work exactly as how it should be in the production environment. And point number three, implement 3D Secure, or in short, 3DS. See, 3DS offers a fraud liability shift on fully authenticated transaction. What does this mean? Basically, in the event where a chargeback occurs due to fraud, if the transaction has been fully authenticated by 3D Secure, the liability of the fraudulent amount now shifts from the merchant to the card issuer. Of course, throughout my conversations with some merchants, they have expressed concerns about using 3D Secure because it introduces friction into the payment journey and it causes uh, a good percentage of shopper to abandon the shopping cart. However, 3D Secure has undergone through a, a change over, uh, over the last two or three years where they have upgraded the protocol from 3DS1 to 3DS2. And with the 3DS2 protocol, it now offers a much more improved authentication experience. So it supports modern payment use cases, modern authentication method using mobile phones. So you can actually authenticate using your face ID or fingerprint without retrieving a one-time password and then entering it, entering it into the challenge page of the bank. So this makes the checkout journey much more seamless. And in addition, merchants can actually send 10 times more data to the card issuer. With more data, the card issuers are able to perform um, a much more comprehensive risk analysis. And if the, the issuer is actually satisfied with this information, this data that is being sent, they are able to authenticate the cardholder in a frictionless way. With it, the cardholder doesn't need to go through any challenge and the merchant receives a fully authenticated transaction and the card issuer is happy with the risk profile of the transaction. It's a win-win situation for all parties. Point number four, extend your focus beyond just credit card fraud. With alternative payment methods such as e-wallets, bank transfers and other non-card payment methods growing in popularity, it is recommended that you look beyond just managing fraud in the credit card space. You are recommended to actually put in, in place processes and resources to manage fraud in the alternative payment method space as well. In addition, legacy fraud tools may be geared towards just managing fraud in, the, in terms of credit card. So you should look at deploying the right fraud tools that allow you to cover more than just cards. Point number five, optimize your chargeback management process. A key strategy to manage chargeback is to have a robust evidence gathering process where important artifacts are collected at the start of the sale to the fulfillment, fulfillment of the order. In addition, 
merchants should look to automate the entire chargeback management process through API. This will significantly reduce the time devoted to chargeback management, saving you labor and the cost of assigning or hiring staff to manage this manual task. And point number six, balancing risk and optimizing customer experience. Risk management should work in tandem with customer experience. The fraud control measures that are put in place should not be overly excessive where it negatively impacts acceptance rate unnecessarily. So you need to balance the controls that you have put in place in order to let the good transactions pass and block out the bad transactions. So at Rapid, protecting our clients from fraud is one of our key priority. With Rapid Protect, we can help you in your journey to combat fraud. Rapid Protect is the only fraud solution that is embedded in the world's largest payment network. It allows you to not only manage fraud for cards, but also for alternative payment methods such as e-wallets, bank transfers, and other payment methods. With that, you can now allow your customers to pay in their preferred me methods, but still be protected in the entire payment journey. So these are some of the key benefits that Rapid Protects offer. Machine learning, I've emphasized on the importance of it. So our machine learning feature that is deployed within Rapid Protect is based on our proprietary in-house data model which is constantly optimized and updated by our fraud managers. And you can access Rapid Protect through the client portal and it is there you can obtain comprehensive reports giving you information to transaction details, block transactions, and what are the specific rules they have triggered within a transaction. And at the same time, there is also an extensive management system where you can manage alerts and fraud rules. And the next feature is manual review. There is an option where you can actually set up a manual review process for transactions which you classify as high risk. So in the event if you have a particular profile of transactions that you want to specifically have a look through before you allow it to go through, you can set it up for manual review. Within Rapid Protect, we have a velocity engine which you can leverage to monitor your transactions on a real-time basis for usage patterns such as frequency. For example, you can detect how many times a card has been used for payments within a span of time, how many times a customer has made payment within that window period. And with that, it can be a criteria that you look at to block the transaction. And we also have a rule building engine built within Rapid Protect that you can access through the client portal. This allows your users, your back office users, to easily drag and drop components to create rules. There isn't any development that is required to be on your site. Adding on to that, there is also a rule library of already customized rules that are readily to be deployed by you out of the box. And the very last point, the very last feature, Rapid Protect saves you time and money because this is already included in Rapid's platform and it is available to all Rapid's clients without any additional cost or development effort. So for Rapid Protect, we have our documentation published online in which you can refer to readily. And these are some of the screen captures that are an example to you where how, you, how your back office users can actually log into a client portal to manage the rules. So the rules are actually listed clearly uh, on the client portal where you can have a, an overview of what has been set up. Your, your back office users are able to create simple or nested rules 
very quickly via the UI as what I've mentioned earlier on where you can drag and drop components using drop down fields to just select what are the criteria that have already been pre-set up and at the same time there are more than 100 fields available across the client and back office environment where you can leverage as parameters in, to feed into your fraud management process so I've come to the end of my presentation and I hope that the insights that I've shared were helpful for you to understand more on payment fraud on how you can mitigate them and how Rapid can partner you on your payment journey. Thank you so much.